In this Linus Tech Tips backpack review, I'm gonna break this bag down and show you everything that you need to know to decide whether or not this is the bag for you. But you're gonna wanna stick around to the end because on this channel, I've reviewed over 300 different bags, a lot of them tech bags. And if this bag is not for you, I'll make some alternative recommendations for bags that I think might better suit your needs. Let's kick it off by talking about the gist of the Linus Tech Tips backpack review. I'll start by saying I read and respond to every single comment on my YouTube channel. And this is probably the most requested bag review I've ever gotten. And the reason being, if you don't know, Linus has a YouTube channel where he gives tech tips and he's got like a billion subscribers. And he made this backpack and launched it recently, targeting his tech I carry 16 laptops at a time community. But if you're here, there's probably a good chance that you know that. So let me run you through some of the top features of the bag. The bag is marketed as 25 liters internal size and 35 liters external, which is just weird to me. I don't know exactly what that means. But what I think that they're saying is this main compartment is 25 liters and the bag as a whole gives you an extra 10. If that's the case, that means it's a total of 35 liters, which is pretty big for an everyday carry, but a good size for a travel backpack. But that's also relative on how much tech gear you carry. Because speaking of tech gear, the biggest selling point of this bag is its organization for its tech gear. Whether it's this super interesting like front door compartment, I've never seen this before. The quick access side pocket slash battery charging station or the big old tech compartment, which can fit up to one, two, three laptops. This is obviously a bag that's catered to a very specific audience. Now, in my opinion, one of the biggest like weaknesses of this bag is going to be its aesthetic. Style is subjective, I get that. But like for me, this just bag's just like a little 1990s blobby looking. It really is lacking on the sex appeal, which is fine for some, right? Some people are just looking for a highly functional bag or maybe the 1990s blob lacking sex appeal look appeals to you. No judgment, I just think that more or less one of the main criticisms of this bag is just kind of its aesthetics are meh. It currently comes in one color option, black. It's advertised as weighing 3.7 pounds. Yep, it checks out. My Amazon scale says 3.8 LBS, which for me is a bit on the heavy side, but I guess it's also okay considering the capacity. This is the bag when it's empty, and this is the bag when it's fully packed out on me. For reference, I'm 5'8", and I'm gonna pack out this bag throughout the entire review so you can see exactly what it fits. The bag comes with a limited lifetime warranty against manufacturing defects, which we're gonna talk about a manufacturing defect in just a minute. And for all that, as of recording, the bag runs around 250 US dollars. Now, if at any point during this video, you're thinking to yourself, I love Linus. I love carrying three laptops. I love this bag. And you're gonna make a purchase. We do ask that you do so using the first link in the description. Reason being that link sometimes has discount codes, but it always makes sure you get the best price and it helps to support the Nomads Nation YouTube channel, which we greatly appreciate. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about the front of the Linus Tech Tips backpack. First up, the branding. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of the channel. So the LTT stamp on the bag, you wear it with pride. Like this man has given me so many tech tips. I wanna show the world how much I appreciate those tips of the tech. But I do appreciate that it's black on black, a little more subtle that way. But honestly, it is a little bit louder than my personal taste kind of likes. Now quickly, let's talk about the exterior material. This is polyester. Now. This polyester is 100% recycled and has a PU coating to ensure additional weather resistance. It's a very weather resistant material, but it should be noted it's not gonna be as weather resistant as a ballistic nylon, X-Pack, tarpaulin. These are like super high tech materials that last through like three monsoons back to back to back. This will keep your gear safe, but it's not gonna be as extreme on the weather resistance as those more modern high tech materials and fabrics. Keep that in mind. First pocket, we got this top pocket right here, which when you open it up, has the bag's signature orange material. And this material in particular is a microfiber material, which means the bag god that made this design are communicating to us that that's where we should put our sunglasses. Microfiber helps keep your sunglasses scratch free, a little bit of padding for protection, and extra protection with a YKK PU coated zipper. Next up, let's talk about the door. Cause this is one of the more bold and interesting bag design decisions I have may have ever seen. And then these other spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a pen, tissues, AirPods. And this pocket is, I think for Linus tech tips, like screwdriver or some apparatus or tool that I do not have. So for me, a good spot for protein bar. Ultimately, it's a compartment that keeps you organized and prepared for anything. Okay, let's talk about the middle of the Linus Tech Tips backpack. First up, one thing to note, I did a lot of research on this bag and a lot of people are about its standing or what they say is their lack of ability to stand. This is heavily marketed as a self-standing backpack and as you can see, it is with a caveat. 
That as opposed to like the Nomadic backpack, which is like a super hard shell bag that always keeps its shape and always stands upright because of that, this is a softer bag, which means that it's lighter, right? The Nomadic bag is half the size and weighs another, an extra pound. But with that, you're gonna get some of this like collapsing effect, and that might get worse with time. Now, one way to offset this is just make sure you have like some bulkier items at the bottom of the bag. For me, I always got a tech pouch with me. Throw that at the bottom. This is the Alpaca Vertex. It just gives it a little extra beef, right? And then now this bag is always gonna stand. But if you're looking for that bag that would always stand, even when it's empty, there are technically better options out there. On the first side, we have some external lash points, good for attaching things with a carabiner, which is included. Other side, we have this quick access side pocket. Yet again, YKK PU coated zippers. We're gonna talk about these other YKK PU coated zippers in just a minute. It's very important. But on this side, you can see it's a very accessible pocket with one, two compartments on this side and a little mesh zipper compartment on the opposite side. And you can do the super cool thing where you can unzip this and you can get access to the outside of the bag. Why? <laughs> so dramatic. Batteries. And I'm not talking Duracells. I'm talking an external battery, right, that you can store on the side of this bag, plug it on in, and then whether you're traveling on the train or grabbing a flight, it don't matter. You can easily keep your tech stuff charged, like so. And then whenever you're done with the wire, tuck it back in, nice and clean, good to go. Okay, finally, main compartment, which is accessible with these two interesting carabiner zips, which I was stoked about, I was jazzed about them. I was like, interesting, different, functional. They still work as zippers, you can pull them, but they also have the ability to lock together, which isn't gonna stop a thief like dead in his tracks, but right, it will deter the thief. That's all we're trying to do here, people, just deter. But unfortunately, these zippers got a big freaking problem where you can see if you push on one side of the zipper, it is just on its way to snapping right off. And these things are coming off left and right. Now that's the bad news. The good news is that Linus and his team have acknowledged this. They've owned it and they are creating a solution that they're gonna ship to everyone who bought one of the bags. So you can go ahead and pop these zippers off and replace it with a new zipper. But let's be honest, that's a thing. It's just a whole thing. I'm not really sure where they are in regards to a fix to this. The good news though, is that if it does break, it just sort of snips off there. The zipper is still totally usable. And a solution is apparently on the way. Getting into the main compartment, voila, you can see orange. Note about this material too, it's a ripstop nylon. It's called ripstop, can you see these little squares right here? Those squares help to reinforce the actual fabric. So if there's a rip, it stops at each one of those lines. One point of criticism that I read online is that people were a little disappointed by the amount of organization in this main compartment. For me though, I'm all about it. I like a lot of organization on the outside, I mean, not too much. And then just kind of like minimalism on the inside because I'm kind of into pouches these days and also just when you have this big old space, it's just kind of hard to use. A couple pockets is okay, but anything over that, I don't know. That's just me though. In the main compartment, we have the top zipper pocket right here and a water bottle pocket on the side. Now, one thing to note, there's no external water bottle on the exterior of this bag, which is gonna just be, that's gonna be the exit sign for a lot of y'all. Couple water bottle tests, I got a 16 ounce piece of cake, 23 ounce, good to go. And one nifty feature is there's an air tag pocket right there next to the water bottle holder, which is a peculiar location, but I'm sure it gets the job done. Next to this top pocket, runs down to about here. For me, it's a good spot for maybe some meds, backup credit cards, right? That you just want sort of out of the way in case of an emergency. That's what goes there for me. And that's it for organization. The rest is just gonna be sort of bulkier items or do what I do and throw some pouches in there. Let's pack it out. I got my water bottle on the side, throw my alpaca vertex pouch at the bottom. I got another tech pouch from step 22, right? Throw a sweater on top. That feels like 25 liters and that's it. Let's talk about the back of the Linus Tech Tips backpack. First up is the laptop compartment. This is going to be a primary selling point for a lot of y'all out there. And that's gonna be for two reasons. One, because there's a ton of tech organization, and two, because you can fit a big ass laptop in there. How big? I got this super old laptop that we're referring to as the Beast, and I'm just gonna tell you, it doesn't fit in the biggest laptop sleeve. I don't know if 17 inches even come this big anymore, so I don't think that's a problem, but it does fit in the actual main compartment, and it shows just how beefy this tech compartment actually is because most bags can't put this thing anywhere near it. But for me though, I'm a pretty basic <laughs> I just got my 13 inch MacBook Pro, so you can see it easily fits in one, 
to all three of the laptop sleeves. If you travel with three laptops, my knee-jerk reaction is to think that you're a crazy person. But if you got two laptops and an iPad, maybe you're just like a half crazy person. But from one crazy person to another, I get it. Like we all need our things, right? So that's what this bag is all about. Be sure to check the Linus Tech Tips backpack specs page to see if your specific tech gear fits into these specific tech compartments. And then on the flip side, we got one, two pockets here, which is great for organizing other tech gear. The mouse, throw your keyboard in the middle. It's sort of a tech mecca in there. Plenty of organization. But it should be noted, this tech compartment is also accessible with the super fragile carabiner zipper cluster. I hope they get that sorted, because I know he's a creator who followed his dream to make a backpack, which I don't know if you know is exactly what I'm doing. I'm actually building a backpack here on the Nomads Nation YouTube channel. So I know like there's all these little decisions that need to be made, and it's, it's, it's a lot harder than it sounds. So I'm, I'm rooting for the Linus Tech Tips team that they can hopefully figure that out. And also, if you wanna learn about the backpack that I'm building, check out the second link in the description below. From there, we have a top handle, tons of reinforcements. See these steel rivets right there? That enables them to have like a sexier kind of approach to enforcing and securing this top handle, as opposed to like a bunch of stitches. They just have these rivets. And apparently this can hold up to 175 pounds, but please don't put 175 pounds worth of gear in this backpack to test it. It's just, it's too heavy. From there, let's talk about the comfort. Comfort of bag comes out of two things, shoulder straps and the back panel. Pros and cons with each. For the shoulder straps, we got lots of ventilation and lots of padding. You got this sort of interesting two-fold strategy where you have the super jelly material at the top for additional comfort, and then a more basic ventilated sort of bottom to the shoulder strap. Now, I think that the shoulder straps are very comfy from a padding perspective, and that comfort is helped by the fact that you have a sternum strap. It's a pretty basic sternum strap, but it helps to readjust the weight of the bag from your lower back to your torso. There's no web holder, AKA dangle stopper, AKA the thing we hate most in the world on this channel. So this thing's gonna be flapping around a little bit, but the sternum strap is adjustable and removable. But one thing I'm not crazy about, personally, I like to wear my backpack very tight, as tight as possible. And for some reason, the Linus Tech Tips team added this additional fabric that connects the two straps before it hits the actual back panel. And this is peculiar. I've reviewed, as I've said, a lot of bags. Never seen one quite do this before. Usually there's a very clear separation between the two. And the problem is this is sort of where your neck goes, right? Now, if you wear your bag loose or semi-loose, not gonna have any problems. But if you're like me, you wear it as tight as mother possible, um, you're gonna sort of feel that press against your neck. And it's not painful, just a little noticeable and strange. If you have a wider neck, like I'm a super skinny dude, you know, I'm a buck, I'm a 150 pounds, right? So if your neck is a little bit on the, let's say girthier side, I've read online that some people are dealing with pinching issues. For me though, it's not pinching, it's not painful, it's just this thing where I'm like, that is interesting. I'd rather it wasn't there. Moving on down, we have metal hardware. Metal hardware is great because it gives a bit of a premium feel, which is nice when you have a bag that costs 250 bucks. But metal hardware can also be loud, right? It's always, it always has to make a scene. Okay, now the second thing with the comfort, let's talk about the back panel. Yet again, back panel comes down to padding and ventilation. Decent amount of padding here. And then for breathability, you have this mesh and behind it, you have like these foam uh, with these cuts that just help airflow, right? Promotes extra breathability and ultimately it just feels nice against the back. Overall in combination, minus the strange little neck flap thing going on, it's a pretty comfortable bag. Couple more points on the back. First up, we got this super interesting luggage pass through holder. And it's interesting for a few reasons. One, it's like this big old blob, which fits the kind of the aesthetic of the bag is kind of blobby. But two is it's adjustable and removable. So if you do not want the luggage pass-through holder, you just go ahead and unvelcro it. And then if voila, gone. But because of its removable nature, it's not gonna be the best luggage pass-through holder because there's a lot more give. It's not really sort of as tight as other luggage pass-through holders. I don't think that means that it's gonna end up falling off, but it's just something to be aware of. But the cool thing is if you're not traveling anytime soon, it's removable and the LTT team gives you a designated spot in the bag to stow it away. You have this back zip pocket right here. And this back zip pocket is not necessarily just a luggage pass-through holder stowaway pocket. It's also an RFID protected pocket, which makes it ideal for things like your credit card or a passport when you're traveling. So you can just kind of keep this in here when you're not traveling. And then when you are traveling, take it out, patch this on, passport in, ready to go. Let's talk about the overall pros and the overall cons of the Linus Tech Tips backpack. 
Overall, Pro number one, it's one of the few bags that I've reviewed that is just like super niche for super, super, super techie people, especially if you carry multiple laptops. Overall pro number two, pretty impressive comfort when it comes to the shoulder straps and the back panel. And overall pro number three, I'm gonna give them credit for the, the front door. It, it works, cause you can just sort of unzip it and grab the things that you need. You don't have to fully commit, but then when you need that extra room, it goes fully open. I think it works. But on the flip side, don't you worry, I got some cons and I'm gonna tell you about them. Obviously this zipper problem is, is not great. I hope they get it figured out soon. Something that you should definitely look into before buying the bag though. Con number two is it's definitely not the sexiest bag ever made. And con number three, I do think at the price point, some of the materials, I don't wanna say they're cheap, I just think that there's other bags that have more premium materials at this price point. But if you're still watching this, there's a good chance that you might be like, Aaron, I love this bag. I love it. I'm gonna get one. And if you're gonna make a purchase or you just wanna find out more information, just remember that we do ask that you do so using the first link in the description. That link just makes sure that you get the best price and we also oftentimes have discount codes and it also helps to support the Nomad Nation YouTube channel. Thank you. But if not, I'm here to give you a few alternative recommendations that might better suit your needs. Alternative recommendation number one is gonna be the Tortuga Travel Backpack. This will be for you if you weren't looking for an everyday carry, you really wanted a travel backpack and comfort, durability, and laptop protection are of the utmost importance to you. Those are the three things that the Tortuga Travel Backpack does well. It comes in a 35 liter or a 45 liter. And to learn more about it, just go ahead and take a look at the description below and you'll find a link to our full review. Alternative recommendation number two is going to be the Simple Weekender. This is for you if you're looking for a bag that has a little bit more of an adventure element that can also still protect your tech very well. This is not a hiking bag, the Linus Tech Tips backpack. It's not a bag that you wanna to bring to the beach. So if you're the kind of person that likes to work hard and play hard, and you're looking for that awesome laptop protection, take a look at our review of the Simple Weekender backpack, which you can find in the description below. And finally, alternative recommendation number three is going to be the Air Tech Pack 2. This is for you if you're looking for a little bit of a smaller everyday tech bag. You don't need it to be kind of as big and bulky. You just want it to look a lot sexier, nicer, and more business professional maybe. Air makes some of the best tech bags in the game. And to learn more about this one, just go ahead and watch this review right here. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I personally respond to every single one myself. My name is Aaron, this is Nomad's Nation, and we'll catch you next time.